organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Daily Iowa TV. I'm Nikki Crosswave. Our top story, death on Capitol Street. We bring you the latest on the suspicious death that occurred yesterday. And later, take a look at how the citizens of Iowa City stood up for science. We show you how the Iowa football spring game went Friday night. And if the baseball team was able to keep their winning streak alive. We're seeing more thunderstorms coming our way. Find out more during weather. All that and more coming up. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Daily Iowa TV. I'm Nikki Crossway. Yesterday, the Iowa City Police Department responded to reports of a dead body on 518 South Capitol Street across the street from the Johnson County Jail. A press release from the city of Iowa City says around 11 a.m. yesterday, officers were called to the Letterman Bail Bonds office for unknown reasons, where a man was found dead. Authorities are saying the death is suspicious. The identity of the man is not being released at this time until his identification is confirmed and the family is notified. This kind of crime has come as a bit of a shock to some of the residents. Pretty surprised. I mean, I walk down this road all the time and I've never seen anything like this. I mean, we're right across from the sheriff's station, so um, it's unusual to see anything like this here. More information is expected to be released later today. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates as this story further develops. Iowa City's Mercy Hospital has announced that it is eliminating 20 jobs this month due to pressing financial issues. The positions being eliminated range from both full-time to part-time. However, none of them are involved in direct patient care. This comes at not even a year after Mercy Hospital closed its skilled nursing unit, which happened back in June of 2016. Stick with us as more updates come in. We've all been in a situation before where an alarm suddenly goes off and we're not sure what to do. Reporter Mackenzie Cooper talks to the director of University Counseling Services to find out why people react the way they do in an event of emergency. Imagine you're in a crowded public place when the alarm sounds. In this moment, what would you do? I generally don't panic in, uh, term, like, you know, in terms of that. You, know, you just walk outside and it's usually fine. <laughs> And I'd like to say I'd be the hero, but honestly, I'd probably just listen to somebody else and hope someone could get it under control. And while many people may have a plan when it comes to an emergency situation, their instincts may not always follow through. Response begins to sort of go down. The response to the stimulus gets, starts to get extinguished, where if I've never heard an alarm before and all of a sudden it goes off, I, that gets my attention. It's an alarming thing to me, and so I respond to it. When it comes to an emergency situation, many people are concerned on having to fight or flight. But there's actually a third reaction that people should be worried about the most. You might fight, you might flight, you might freeze. So that becomes the worry, right, is that in an emergency situation, I would not flee, I wouldn't fight, I would just get stuck. In order to be the most prepared that you can be in the event of an emergency situation, Dr. Schreier suggests that you are always prepared ahead of time and that you are aware of your nearest exits. Reporting from the University of Iowa, this is Mackenzie Cooper, Daily Iowa TV. Well, guys, no better way to start a Monday morning off than with sunny skies. Let's toss it over to Ryan Scott in the weather studio, see if we can keep looking forward to the sun. Ryan, what do you have for us? Well, Nikki, it's looking beautiful out today. This morning we're seeing mid-50s with clear skies. You can see people behind me. Some people are walking by even in shorts and sweatshirts, so it is really nice right now at least. And our afternoon is going to look even better with highs in the mid-70s. Our evening will cool down though to the low 50s with cloudy skies and tomorrow morning we'll kick things off with temperatures in the mid 70s. Moving on to the rest of the week, we're seeing chances of thunderstorms and showers, so let's get to it. Tuesday, highs in the mid 70s with cloudy skies. Wednesday, highs in the upper 50s with a 90% chance of rain. Thursday, highs in the low 50s with a 60% chance of rain. Friday, highs in the mid 60s with partly cloudy skies. And looking ahead to our weekend, it's not looking fun to say the least. We're seeing high chance of thunderstorms and temps in the mid 50s and low 70s. That's all we have here in the weather studio. Stay dry out this week, Hawkeyes. Nikki, back to you. 
The Iowa legislature has finished this year's session last Saturday, a session that lasted over 100 days with the GOP controlling the Senate House, Senate and governorship. Republican lawmakers were able to push through several pieces of conservative legislation. This includes a law stripping Iowa's public workers of their collective bargaining rights, a bill imposing restrictions on local minimum wage increases, and most recently a bill banning abortions at 20 weeks. Hundred gathered for the March for Science rally last Saturday afternoon. The demonstrators from all walks of life came together to voice their disapproval of how science is often politicized. Daily Iowan reporter Gustavo Meyer has more. Science, that's what brought so many to the Pentacrest Saturday. Whether it's fighting against climate change or fundings for science being cut, they insist on one thing. It's a common goal that unites everyone. Co-organizer Amy Charles asks scientists to be more outspoken. For the public, that science needs their support. It always has, um, needs it especially now, so coming out and being a bit loud in support of science, scientists tend to be polite, not very loud, but um, let people know why you care about it. Um, the conversation really matters. Dave Lesh spoke on Congressman Lobsack's behalf. Congressman Lobsack stressed the importance of research funding and the University of Iowa's blood center. I will continue to work to ensure that these essential institutions receive the funding needed for cutting-edge research at places like the Holden Center right here at the University of Iowa. Co-organizer Paige Mitchell rallied the demonstrators for their march. Everyone from toddlers to the elderly participated. Their demand? Simple. A better world for the future of the planet. Amy Charles also asked for people to call. Governor Branstad and show their concern is something that will not be ignored. The event went really well today. Um, I'm very overwhelmed by the amount of support. The Iowa community is one of the best communities that I've ever lived in. There's just so many people came out today, children, um, families, uh, scientists come, came to speak. Um, and I was just really happy that people wanted to be involved in the celebration of science. Reporting from the Pentecost in Iowa City, Gustavo Meyer, Daily Iowan TV. Today is the first of the second annual Trans Week of Action, a week of programs and events that are designed to encourage and advocate the support of both transgender individuals and transgender community as a whole. Today begins with action stations from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Wesley Center. Tomorrow in the transaction, allyship workshop from 1 30 to 3 p.m. in the IMU. Wednesday is the student trans educational forum from 7 to 8 p.m. also at the IMU. And finally Thursday is intersex activism and in the trans community from 7 30 to 8 p.m. in the IMU. For more information please visit the Trans Week of Action 2017 Facebook page. Busy week for Hawkeye Athletics as I said last Friday so let's toss it over to Ashlyn and Lucy in the sports studio to find out just what happened this weekend. Thanks, Nikki. Once again, a very busy weekend for Hawkeye sports. That's for sure. We'll start off with football as they hosted their spring game Friday night under the lights in Kinnick Stadium. As the team is preparing for the fall, safety Brandon Snyder recently tearing his ACL was definitely not good news. But just like it has always been, the next man in mentality set in. And Jake Gervas proved Friday night that he's ready to be that man. You never want to see a guy get hurt, especially a guy like him. You know, he's a leader of our defense. He's one of the toughest kids I know, hardest worker. You know, it sucks to see. Um, knowing him, he'll come back better than ever. You know, he's a tough kid. He's strong. He'll, he'll come back. But, you know, Coach Ferentz always talks about next man in, and that's not guaranteed to be me. You know, right now it was tonight. I was working with the ones, but nothing's guaranteed moving forward. And uh, as a secondary, as a defense, we just got to keep getting better. Gervas had a standout night on Friday with three interceptions throughout the game, including a pick six. With a performance like that, it's safe to say that he is ready for the fall. It's fun. You know, it's the first time I've had a pick in Kinnick. Um, like I said earlier, all the credit goes to, you know, Coach, Coach Parker for getting us in the right spot, right coverages, the guys up front putting pressure on the quarterback. And I just tried to, you know, do my job, and I was in the right place at the right time. And, you know, it was fun doing it out here in front of the fans in Kinnick. Stay with the Daily Iowa TV for more injury and position updates. And make sure to tune in tomorrow as we'll show you how the quarterback situation is looking for the fall. While the weather was nice for Iowa baseball this last weekend, the Hawkeyes struggled to find a way to win. The Hawkeyes can only come away with one win in a three-game series against Rutgers last weekend. Junior Matt Hoig was a bright spot for the Hawkeyes, having two two-run home runs in the first game. At some points I've been letting the team down, not getting big hits to uh, help propel us to victories that we should get, and I felt like... I'm going to keep, keep working and stick with the process, and it definitely showed tonight. 
while Iowa was able to pull away with the 8-5 victory on Friday, they weren't able to come away with the same results on Saturday. Too many errors and leaving runners on base allowed Rutgers to beat the Hawks 5-3. I'm going to look back and that's going to that's gonna hurt. Like, yeah. that's, that shouldn't happen. I make that play 100 times, mm. all of, like every time. You know, he hurt himself in, in the one inning with, with um, the mistake on the mound. Um, two errors in one play, and they ended up scoring runs on that. And, and we didn't have a lot of free bases, but the ones that we did have, they were able to take advantage of it. While Iowa tried to fix some of the mistakes from Saturday night's loss, it only continued into the final game in the series yesterday. The Hawks allowed 16 hits in the 13-5 loss. First and foremost, I mean, we're, we're, we're better than this. Um, second of all, we're kind of at a crossroads, you know. I mean, we've got a lot of excuses, and, and we've had adversity with pitchers being down all year. And now, you know, we've had two more go down to where we're looking at seven guys. And, and you know, what are we going to do? Is, or is there somebody that's going to step up, or, or is this what it's going to be? The Hawkeyes will look to bounce back as they take on the Milwaukee Panthers tomorrow at 6.05 in Iowa City. Reporting from Dwayne Bakesfield, this has been Zachary Lohman with Daily Iowan TV Sports. Over the weekend, the Iowa softball team dropped their series with the Minnesota Gophers 0-3. They will meet up with Western Illinois on Wednesday at 7 p.m. On Saturday afternoon, the women's tennis team hosted conference opponent Nebraska for the last match of the season. On senior day, the Hawkeyes hosted Nebraska in one of their closest matches of the season, with some late game heroics from Zoe Douglas and Kristen Toms helping the Hawkeyes to win this matchup. After the close matchup, assistant coach Drew Lyde had praise for all of the players. I mean, I think they all did a lot of good things, you know. I think Elise executed very well. Um, she was a little bit better than the girl. I think Zoe, I mean, being down third set 4-1 and, and being able to fight her way back says a lot about her and her character and, and what Iowa tennis is all about. And then when it's 3-all and Kristen's able to close that out so decisively, I mean, that's just awesome. So it was an all-around team effort and it was great. After finding herself down in the third set, Zoe Douglas managed to fight back and win in a tiebreaker. I mean, I lost nine straight games, and it wasn't a good feeling. And you just got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and you know that eventually something's going to turn around if you keep doing the things right. And that's what I was hoping for, and it happened. And I got them two games at 4-1, and then it was 4-3, and I was right back in it. And I knew that I would make the girl tighter, and she started missing more, and it was either of us to win. So. Kristen Tom said the final match of the day that sealed the win for the Hawkeyes. And I just just was so happy when I saw that ball go out. I just looked at my team right away and I just was so excited. While this was an emotional day for the seniors, it was all smiles and high fives as they won their final match. Reporting from the Hawkeye Tennis and Recreational Complex, this is Jacob Senstead, Daily Iowan TV Sports. We will have more on how the men's tennis team did over the weekend tomorrow. As for other Hawkeye sports that were in action this weekend, the men's golf team finished up in third place at the Robert Kepler Intercollegiate Invitational. The women's golf team finished the Big Ten Championships in 10th place on Sunday. The men's gymnastics team competed in the 2017 NCAA Championship Finals on Saturday, and senior Andrew Bado, Bado finished 14th in the all-around with a score of 80.85. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for recaps from the track and field meet and the men's tennis from this weekend. We'll also have more from the skiing spring game. Nikki, back to you. That wraps up our Monday morning broadcast. Make sure to tune in every morning at 8.30 a.m. sharp, where we bring you the latest in all these things Johnson County. And don't forget to pick up a copy of the Daily Iowan. From all of us here at Daily Iowan TV, this has been Nikki Crossway. Have a good morning, Iowa City. We'll see you back here tomorrow.